Hello, welcome back. I'm Statman Dave, and today we're going to be looking at why Ajax are the surprise package in the Champions League this season. Make sure to subscribe if you are new and like that goddamn video, and of course, turn those notification bells on. Anyway, let's get this party started. For those who have watched Ajax under Eric Ten Hag, you'll know that they are not the surprise package, and they, in fact, they are a very, very good footballing side. But how has the Dutchman built them into this team? Ajax appointed Eric Ten Hag on the 21st of December 2017, following the sacking of Marcel Kaiser. Previously, Ten Hag had managerial spells at go-ahead Eagles, Bayern Munich second team, and then the most impressive spell of his career at FC Utrecht, where he guided them to fourth position in the Eredivisie and thus getting them into the Europa League. At Utrecht, Ten Hag mainly employed a 4-4-2 diamond. They dropped into a narrow 4-3-3 in defence, with the false nine dropping into midfield to apply pressure and dictate the counter-attack. We see characteristics of Ten Hag's Utrecht in Amsterdam. Ajax set up in a 4-2-1-3 under Ten Hag. They play a high-pressing vertical possession-based game. In possession, Ajax are fascinating to watch. The trend with overperforming sides in European football is to play a vertical tiki taka system. Take Nagelsmann's Hoffenheim, Sari's Napoli, Bielsa's Leeds United, and Pochettino's Spurs. Ten Hag has adopted that style at Ajax. His side move like a single organism, keeping their shape vertically and horizontally, spacing themselves well over the pitch. The vertical passing allows for a fast transition, with Ajax looking to get the ball into the feet of either Tadic or Ziyech, before looking to play through balls in behind their opponent's defence. In the standard possession phase, Ajax used diamonds. They set up in a 3-3-1-3, allowing the creation of three diamonds. A diamond is the best shape for possession football, as it gives the player in possession three passing options, thus better ball retention. The diamond was championed by Ajax legend Johan Cruyff in his tactics. His 1990s Barcelona team played in a 4-3-3 that became a 3-4-3 with a diamond as his left back inverted. Cruyff's tactics saw him become the most successful Barcelona man in history until Pep Guardiola and Lionel Messi came along. As Barca manager, Cruyff won 11 trophies, including three La Ligas, one Copa del Rey and the last ever European Cup in 1992. But under Ten Hag, Ajax looked to build in a 3-1 shape at the back, but there's many variations of this. It can be a combination of either wing-backs or defensive midfielders with Ajax two centre-halves. Along with a fine sweeper keeper in Andre Onana, Ajax can dominate the ball at the base. That base usually contains Matthias De Ligt, Daly Blind, Lasse Schoener and Frankie de Jong. Two ball-playing centre-backs, a deep-lying playmaker and Frankie de Jong, a modern-day libero. A player capable of stepping out of the back and waltzing around opponents to dictate the attack. As he showed against Ballon d'Or winning midfielder Luka Modric. All the players in the base are very comfortable on the ball and will carry that ball into midfield if required. This tactic is used to draw opponents into pressing Ajax, which consequently means there's space further up the pitch for the attackers to do the damage. The horizontal spacing for Ajax in possession is near perfect. Credit has to go to Ten Hag. The understanding of the wing backs and inside forwards to hold the space is near perfection. One will invert while the other one holds the width to create not only horizontal passing lanes to get in between the lines, but also sets up the counter press. Eric Ten Hag employs an aggressive ball oriented counter press when Ajax have lost the ball, similar to Klopp's Gegen press at Dortmund, focusing on the ball carrier, the ball, and the surrounding area, with each player pressing in the direction of the ball to force an error. They can do this with such intensity because they've retained numbers at the back, have balanced both in the midfield and down the wings, and have safety players near the ball. All signs of a really well-drilled side. Now let's move on to the attack. As mentioned before, Ajax play a vertical tiki-taka style in a 3-3-1-3 in possession. Ten Hag uses a combination of a false nine inside forwards and the movement of box-to-box -box midfielder Donny van der Beek to open up his opponents. There's a lot of rotation of positions in attack with the front four regularly switching positions. Tadic and Ziyech are the creators in the side, David Neres is the dribbler and Van der Beek's movement adds a real unpredictability to Ajax's attack. Their method of chance creation in this style is looking for through balls to get a player in behind or low crosses into the box. The methods of chance creation are really similar to a traditional tiki-taka style. Think Guardiola's Barcelona. But the key difference is the directness of the play. Ajax will progress the ball into the final third. And if the options are closed off, they won't recycle possession backwards like a Guardiola side. Instead, they'll look to force something with a long shot, often through Dusan Tadic or, of course, Hakim Ziyech. 
Dusan Tadic is playing the best football of his career under Ten Hag, an inconsistent winger at Southampton now in the form of his life at Ajax as a false nine, scoring 26 goals and registering 13 assists across 38 appearances in the Eredivisie and Champions League this season. On top of that, Tadic has created the most chances in open play in the Champions League this season. The Serbian playmaker is in the form of his life. The nature of Ten Hag's philosophy has allowed Tadic a Messi-esque free role, moving off the line and getting on the ball, allowing one of the supporting cast behind him to become the nominal striker. This is what destroyed Real Madrid at the Bernabeu. Highlighted by his fantastic assist for the Neres goal, receiving the ball in the right channel, Zidane turning Casemiro then playing a through ball to Neres. At that point, Van der Beek was in the striking position and Neres was making that run from wide left. That goal gave Ajax the advantage in the tie that consequently took them through to the first Champions League quarterfinal since the 2002-03 season. Eric Ten Hag is bringing the glory days back to Ajax, but with more style. Vertical tiki-taka, possession with a purpose. In their 4-1 win over Wilhelm Dirt, Ajax became the first team in Europe to score 100 league goals this season and are the third highest scoring side in the Champions League this season. Only Barcelona and Man City have scored more goals. Anyway, guys, how far can Ajax go this season in the Champions League and can they win the Eredivisie? Get into the comments below. Let me know your thoughts on their cracking style. I've been Satman Dave. Make sure, of course, to subscribe if you're new. Like that goddamn video. Anyway, let's continue this Ajax party. Take Nagelsmann's Hoffenheim. Take, Nagel take Nagelsmann's Hoffenheim. Sorry, Nappy. What's going on with this? Take Nagelsmann's, Hoffel, take Nagelsmann's Hoffenheim, Sari's Napoli, Bielsa's Leeds United and Pochettino's Spurs. Perfection.